Hello again everybody and welcome back to the Red Flag 16-2 campaign in the ATNC Warthog. Today we're on to mission number 4 and we're going to get into the full briefing. Now for this mission I'm going to have two separate versions of the video series, one covering the full mission as usual that's intended for new players or just anybody who wants to see a full mission executed from beginning to end, and one version that is just going to be a recap for people who might be completely satisfied with their ability to perform the administrative portions of the flight and just want to see the execution in the target area that is requested occasionally and invariably ends up performing very very poorly compared to the full missions but I'm going to give that a shot again just to see how the stats look and see how people enjoy it so once that's available the recap video link will be in the video description but in either case let's go ahead and get into the full mission briefing and get this mission going so mission 4 is called removing the bear's claws this is an offensive counter air focused mission for the strike package as a whole so we're going to have some other aircraft taking care of that we're going to, of course, be doing closer support in the A-10. Like it says here, tasked with halting the advance of red ground units moving east out of the FIBA. So, again on the map, we have the white line denoting the FIBA forward edge of the battle area. So, we're going to be working in this area inside this orange box. Now, in addition, we're going to have a B-52 out of Barksdale come in and launch some conventional air launch cruise missiles, Calcums, at an SA-10 site. If you have watched the... F-15 version of this mission that I did, we know this SA-10 side well and it's finally going to get taken out for us in addition to this SA-11 side, hopefully, but we're still going to be far enough to the east that we don't have to worry about these main threats. We're going to be worried more about SA-19s here in our target area. And I'm actually recording the briefing after having flown the mission a long time ago, in fact, and I did get some good footage of the B-52 launching Alcums or Calcums this time around. So look out for that as the mission starts to progress. Now additional restrictions that we're going to be observing, we have Russian Special Forces in the farms area right here around Stir Point 7, so we need to make sure that we don't directly overfly this, or if we do, that we're at a high enough altitude that we don't have to worry about a shoulder-mounted surface-to-air missile threats. So if I can help it, and actually what I do is I come down to the south of the farms. That was the plan going in, and that's the plan that I executed. So instead of the Stir Point 7 being right here, for my purposes, it's going to be more like right down here, just to the north of the container, working within this little corridor between the container and the farms. Now, given the number of flanker and fulcrum assets in theater, we're not anticipating a change in the number of sorties that they can generate. So we can once again expect to be confronted by a superior number of opponents and the lesson learned from the last mission was don't get too far out in front of the strike package. I'm going to hang back as much as feasible this time. Let those F-15s come in here west of the FIBA, take care of those MiG-29 and Suko-27 threats and then I'll push in afterwards. Now getting into specifics, I'm going to be hogged to a four ship of 18 cs so I'm going to have myself and then three other A-10s at my disposal. So we're going to be up against two companies of armor with attached air defenses, and we'll get some more details further down in the briefing. We'll push from Stir Point 6, fly four nautical miles south of Mount Irish en route to Stir Point 7 out here in the vicinity of the farm. So Stir Point 6, the same location that we pushed from last time, 0918 local is the time that we're going to push west to the vicinity of Stir Point 7. And at that point, we're going to check in with a JTAC. Call sign Moonbeam is going to be on VHF FM 30. And Moonbeam is going to be located up here, sort of to the north of the area that we're working around Steer Point 10. So I'll be on the lookout for friendly forces. Uh, that JTAC up there, or actually right down here on this peak. So I'm going to have on the road moving south, it says here 1T90 tank company of 10 tanks, 1 BMP3 IFV company of 10. Infantry fighting vehicles or APCs, and then one air defense section consisting of two SA 19 surface to air missiles. These are very good low altitude, low to medium altitude air threats. They're mobile, they're just going to be right there with the primary target. So that's going to be my primary concern initially is making sure these SA 19s are taken out before I push in too close. Now, if I do happen to take out the entire primary objective, I have secondary objectives of tank companies located north and south of the advance in static defensive positions and those are steer point 9 and steer point 10 as denoted on the map and both companies do include SA-19 air defenses as well now we do expect Springfield harm shooters these are F-18s 
Call sign Springfield with HM88 Harms taking out the SA-10s and SA-11s further to the west, in addition to that B-52 targeting that SA-10 specifically, so we will likely first need to eliminate the SA-19s. Yes, exactly like I was saying, long-range Maverick shots, EGM-65s, will be needed with immediate defensive maneuvers after launch, because once we get close enough to launch an EGM-65, we're right there either on the edge of or probably within the engagement envelope of these SA-19s. So we're going to have to be smart in the way that we execute this and make sure that we know what the threat is and where it is before pushing in too far. Now other assets in the area, two seed flights, F-18s, call sign Springfield. We have F-15s, Dodge 1, 2, 3, and 4, Precision Strike against the northern and southern airfields down here in the range 75 and 76 area and then the calcum strike from the b-52's callsign pontiac hitting the sa-10 so if i come over to the lineup card everything here is standard uh, exactly as we had it last time as far as the route getting up to the push point 0918 push and to make that we're going to look for a 0841 local taxi time and a takeoff time of no later than 0846, but as we saw in the last mission, and as I think I discussed further in this mission as well, we do have some uh, pad built into this mission, so timing getting up to the push point is not going to be critical. It's really just going to be working our way into the area, making sure that we're coordinating with the rest of the packages, specifically those four flights providing air-to-air -air cover to us. So my overall plan when it comes to execution once I get into the area is to stay as low as, as is feasible. I don't have to worry so much about staying low since I'm going to be outside of the SA-10 and SA-11 envelope as you see here. But I don't want to be so high that I make an inviting target for any air-to-air -air threats that pop up. So I'm going to be at a, a moderate altitude, not exactly ground level, probably like more like one to 2,000 feet above ground level that will allow me to see over any ridges that we have coming up and be able to identify the targets hopefully as they come over the ridge now keeping a very very good tabs on where i'm at in relation to the container and the farms is going to be critical if i come too far south that's a mission fail navigation is going to be critical but as far as execution i know exactly where these guys are going to be coming from so it should be very straightforward. I'm going to work the wingmen in as much as I can. I'm going to try some new and different things when it comes to, well, I guess not necessarily new, just some things that I haven't really tried in a long, long time, because working with the wingmen and getting them to do what you want them to do when you want them to do it is an art. There are many ways to use them, and there are some pitfalls if you use them in the wrong way, but we'll get into that once we get the mission going. So let me go ahead and pause here, I'll go ahead and get into the cockpit and we'll get this aircraft started and heading up to the push point. And on the ramp at Nellis, I'm going to go battery and inverter on just to get some basic power on the aircraft. I've got, okay, 0835, I've got a 0841, yeah, 0841 taxi for a 0846 takeoff, so that's going to work out just fine. I can, I can actually take my time here, there's a whole lot of time built into this this mission, all these missions, so if I'm a little bit late getting airborne, no sweat at all. Okay, so let me go ahead and get some just basic configurations going here. Okay, boost pumps, let's go norm for my ECS. Oxygen on, I'm going to blow off a lot of the checks just to step straight into this and uh, just try to make the timing as close to the time as I can. Okay, APU is clear, let's go APU on and get that spinning up. Then I'll get APU power on and get my INS alignment going. Okay, so that's a good start on the APU. Let's go APU power on, CD and Eggy on. And Kiku JTRS IFCC to test, and I'll hold off on the test for just a little bit before I get that stepping through. Okay, day, day. Okay, with a good APU start, I'm clear for an on one. I'm just going to not motor this time. I'll just pull it straight on out. Doesn't matter how you do it. Well, unless you have the ITT above a certain point or you had a, a suspected hot start coming up okay so good lights hydraulic pressures coming up and I'll get the lift gen to kick in here momentarily as everything continues to look good here on the startup
and the CDU bit built-in test is complete, and I've got the alignment going. Okay, there's the generator kicking in. And that is a good start on one. Okay, quick flight control check. Just on the lift system, everything's looking okay from what I can see from here at least. Okay, so everything's still looking okay. Clear four nap on two. Let's go ahead and pull the throttle out of cutoff and watch this one come on up. And I'll go ahead and do the DTS upload. I'll just go to blow it all. And then once the balls reappear right here, I'll be able to work with the systems. Some of the systems I'll have to hold off on until I get the INS alignment and RWR picture, F-15s and E-3 as expected. Yeah, really a little bit too early, I guess. Not even with all the engines running to start worrying about that. As we have a good looking start progressing on number two. Okay, generators kicked in. And that is a good start on two. Okay, upload complete. Let me go to my distance first. Okay, CB 105, CGM 65, Lightning, A9, AL, ALQ 184, ECM pod. I don't know if I mentioned it during the briefing. I'm going to record the briefing after I, I fly this one. So, CB 105s and taking these up instead of the CB 97s, for all intents and purposes, it's the same bomb as the CB 97, just with the, I guess, the wind correct munitions dispenser tail kit. So, I'll get the IFSCC bit stepping through. Okay, charting pod, Maverick. Hey, just for the heck of it, I'm in the mood to do something here that I don't normally do. I'll go EO power on on the Mavericks and get them to warm up, and I'll do a quick check of the Mavericks. Preferably before I leave Chalks, but probably once I'm on the taxi, I've got another hey, about two minutes or so to the brief taxi time. I'll get some palms up so I can listen in as aircraft start to get airborne and on their way. In fact, let me, before I do that, go to 125 EHF AM. I'll call HEC. Nellis. Request start up just to get everything caught up here. Okay, 281 at 7, and I'll wait until the. Well, I'll wait until I'm ready to taxi to request taxi. And okay, everything is still looking okay. And let me get some more config items done. Okay, stability augmentation system engaged, takeoff trim. I'll go in, I skid on. Okay, lighting and okay, tech in. I'll go ahead and go to 12 X ray. I just have this sort of standing by to back me up on navigation. That's the Nellis tech in channel. ILS, I'm not going to worry about. Okay, lighting, I'm good with that config, no problem. And I'm just waiting out basically the INS alignment as my FSCC is done, and there's nothing else that I need to configure here. So I'll just go ahead and exit the menu and go for IFFCC on. Status page is all green, with the exception of the Eggy, which is still initializing. Tad, I'll come over here, I'll put it into expanded mode. I'll just leave that for the duration of the mission, just personal preference on my part. And okay, yeah, everything is still looking good as far as the flight plan. Okay, 0.10 for the JTAC, 0.8 for the primary, 9 for the secondary, is that right? 8 primary, 9 secondary? Yeah, that is right. So primary. Vehicles or tanks coming down the road, secondary, just a defensive position, and 10 with another defensive position up here, and the JTAC, and then exit to 11. Yep, okay, so everything's matching up right there. And how's my alignment going? Still, okay, there we go. Got my flashing INS nav ready. I'll go to nav. Okay, so I'm going to be on time here. Let's go ahead and request taxi. I'll go EAC and. Oh, what is that called? Yeah, EAC and uh, whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> red arrow altimeter on. I'll select Eggy. I'm going to clear up that one. APU Gen, I can go ahead and go off. And APU, I can kill at this point. And that should be a good config for taxi. And if not, I'll clean anything that I didn't catch there up as we get on the taxi here. Nose wheel steering. Throttle up. Quick check the brakes. I'll just take it out to the left. And I know I missed a whole lot of little detail items if you have your checklist out and are following me or something crazy like that. But that's intentional. I'd rather be on time than hit a whole bunch of stuff that I don't necessarily have to for our purposes here. Oh yeah, and then the uh, Mavericks. I warmed them up 
So now I can just go with Master Arm to train. Select the Maverick. It would just be a, you know, it would just be a quick check, just making sure the salute control is working, make sure that I have a good picture. Try to lock something up and you know, just, make, just make sure that they're working. In some cases, I might have to bore sight the missile if I were a pilot and I have all the indications on the HUD right now that would allow me to do that if I really, really wanted to. I would ideally just step through all the missiles, but that's all that I'm going to mess with for now, just so that I can concentrate on the taxi and the departure here and the charging pod is also warmed up. Got a whole bunch of other aircraft getting airborne. In fact, I'll we'll go ahead and switch back over to 124 and listen into the mission frequency as the other aircraft get on their way and already start to build some situational awareness. Just get a picture in my mind of who the players are, what the call signs are, where in general they are, so that once that stuff becomes really important later on, It'll just come natural, so do all the work up front so that you'll be able to enjoy yourself and not have to worry about that sort of thing later on. So we're passing the bomber pad. I can see some more aircraft up there on the, the Gulf ramp. And coming by here, I have some Eglin F-15Cs. This will be one of the Chevy flights. I have the Seymour Johnson F-15 Strike Eagles. So these guys are, looks like they have some Mercury 2 airs, high drag bombs. I'm trying to keep my path going. Looks like I have like an asymmetric load, so I have more weight on my right wing, on my right wing, so it's pulling me over in that direction. More Seymour Johnson, Strike Eagles, whole lot of F-18, Springfield Flight, or Springfield Flights, two of them, or, yeah, I think it's just going to be two poor ships with AGM-88 harms, high-speed anti-radiation missiles. So that's all the players, practically all the players right there waiting to taxi in. It's a good thing that I'm getting airborne first in the A-10. These guys, even if, even though they're taking off after me, are going to have no trouble catching up. Because I was sort of intentionally taxiing fast. My flight's going to take a little bit to catch up. Because I really want to make this takeoff time of 08, let's see, 0851, is that it? Uh, Zero eight forty six. In fact, okay. So I've got forty seconds to the brief takeoff time. And yeah, takeoff time doesn't matter at all. In fact, the push time doesn't necessarily matter because I'm just going to be hanging back and watching things unfold, and then going in to take off my targets once everything is safe to, once it is safe to do so. But I will. As I'm crossing the first runway, go ahead and close my canopy. I'm running through some of the before takeoff items. Let's go with Narm up the seat. The okay, anti skid. Keto heat. I'll just taxi straight on out and get airborne. Okay, it flaps to the takeoff position. I'm just going to. Yeah, I'll just not do the roll and takeoff this time. I'll hold on the runway for a few seconds just to have one more quick look around because I have a feeling somewhere in the back of my mind that I'm missing something here. Let me just go through real quick. Okay, good comms config. Okay, good flight control config. Good engine, good fuel. My AP was off. I've got everything warmed up and started that I want to go, that I want. Okay, RWR, I'll turn the volume down on that just a touch. Okay, charging pod, countermeasures, I'll wait to get the dispenser and the jammer powered on until I'm airborne. And yeah, everything is good down here. I'll clean up the nav config here once I get airborne. Okay, keto, ECS is config, communications, or actually navigation is exactly as I want it. Okay, let's go ahead and push it on up to 90% core RPM. This is where the brakes held, I'm checking engine instruments. Caution warning, pedo heat, anti-skid, APU. Let's go ahead and release brakes. And it was a fast, uh, fast takeoff. I'm almost at the mass gross weight for an A-10 on this mission, so I'm just going to, I think it was 138 that I computed for rotation speed. Up through 60, I'll go ahead and disengage nose wheel steering. It doesn't matter where you do that, anywhere from 50 to 70, or just whenever. As, boy, it's <laughs> taken a while here as I've got, let me see, how much runway do I have remaining? About 5,000 feet, I guess. I think it was about a 5,200 foot takeoff roll. So I'm through 138. Rotate for 10 degrees. And gear up. Positive rate of climb. And I'll wait just a bit before I get the flaps up. Boy, this is 
kind of touchy with this heavy, heavy high drag loadout and flaps up through 175. That works. With a bit of left wing down trim. And we're on our way. So just standard left hand turn and then right up, right hand turn up the Sally elbow. I'm going to pace myself on the commentary. This could be potentially like a two hour mission. I might even have to hit the tanker afterwards. I was looking at the timing and fuel as part of the preparation. So I'll be back in a bit. Point, point. 